Hey guys, Kevin Hill here, and today's video is getting started with SQL Server execution plans, and all my contact information is there. Pause it so you can see it and copy it down, and feel free to stalk me on Twitter, as always. Moving on. This video today is essentially a continuation of one from August 24th that I did, which was Index and Execution Plan Basics. That one was more focused on the creating a non-clustered index than on actually reading the plans that change after you do that. So there's the link, or you can just go to my channel, and again, the date is August 24th last year. You can see it there. So because I want to keep this fairly short and jam-packed with information, we're going to jump right in. This is my SQL 2016 instance that I use all the time. I'm using the Stack Overflow data dump, and I have purged this down quite a bit uh, to not have nearly the amount of, of information in it. Just dumped a bunch of records so it would fit better and backups would be easier. Anyhow, the Stack Overflow, and we're going to be looking specifically at the users table. If you use Stack Overflow or DBA Stack Exchange uh, anytime before 2016, you're in this, in this table. Nothing private, of course, because they're smarter than that. So this table, and by the way, this database is case sensitive from the dump. So if you're having issues on your own tests, that's something to look into. Uh, so we've got the users table and its various columns. And I don't think I have an index on here. Yes, I do. Oops. I'll make that go away real quick. So we'll pretend I didn't have an index there because I don't want to start recording again. And the only index on this table when you get the public dump is on the ID field. And it's called user's ID because users and ID makes perfect sense. But the goal of today is to show you some very, very simple execution plans in the graphical format. And if you don't even know what an execution plan is, that's fine. This is very simply the roadmap that the query optimizer uses in order to figure out how to get you the data that you've requested in your query. Very simple. It's, it's not a whole lot different from if I want to drive down to the Microsoft building in the Irving area, I know roughly how to get there. But if I'm halfway there or there's a bridge out or something like that, then I've got to make a different plan on how I'm going to go, how I'm going to get there. I want the most optimal route so I don't have to deal with a lot of traffic. Same thing with, with SQL Server queries. The optimizer is going to find the fastest route to get you the information you've requested or do whatever you've asked it to do, an update or an insert, and then move on and go satisfy other queries. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, this is a very simple query here. I'm just looking for my own record, which is Kevin3NF, my display name, which is what your username is called, from Stack Overflow users, where it's a very, very simple statement. Now, there's two things I can do here. I can run the query itself, of course, which won't really give me all the information I need unless I hit this, include actual execution plan. But on something this simple, I can show you what I want to show you just by doing estimated execution plans or the control L shortcut. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. There's not any real need for me to run this. So if I just do control L, I get this portion at the bottom because I had no actual data. It just says one row affected. And that was the fact that the query generated this execution plan. This is an estimated plan here. It's also going to be the actual one, but in, a, in your production environment, the estimated plan is, it's a best guess. And the actual plan when it's run could be quite a bit different. So the way you read these things is you want to go right to left and top to bottom. In our case, we only have one row, so there is no top to bottom. So we'll go right to left. The very first thing this did was scan the clustered index, reading again, right to left on this table, which is what we looked at over here. It's because what I asked for was the display name. And because there's no indexes or anything on this table, the, the query processor had to go and read every single page of data down that display name column until it found the Kevin 3 and F. Now, it didn't actually run, but it estimated when you hover over one of these operators, and that's what these three items are called, is an operator. When you hover over one of these, you get a ton of information. If you look at the roughly the middle of that screen, the estimated number of rows, 1.33. Well, it's going to be one because there's only one of me, fortunately. The estimated number of rows to be read because it knows it has to read the whole table, six and a half million. OK, so I'm going to read six and a half million rows to get one. That's because there's no indexes. If you hover over these arrows in between, you also get some abbreviated information. 
Looking at the skinny arrows makes me happy because that small number, they actually get bigger as we do other things. There's so many records in this table. You see the, uh, the yellow double arrow icon on these operators? That means that this query is going to run across multiple processors. That is your parallelism indicator on an operator. So it's going to use multiple CPUs to return the one record that it's going to bring back. And, and just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and run it and show you that there's only one record. There's also no execution plan here anymore because I didn't tell it to include the actual one like I showed you right here. Control M is your shortcut for that, by the way. Those are good ones to remember if you do any query tuning at all. Okay, again, the most basic query and a very, very basic uh, execution plan. Right to left, and if we had more, we'd go top to bottom as well. Uh, this green text here is a very, very wild guess with a horrible name uh, of an index that would have helped this thing go faster, which is really, it's nice, but you don't want to just grab that and start running it. You want to look at that as going, hey, there's something I need to look at. All right, so I am, in fact, going to create an index on this table. Stack Overflow Database, create a non-clustered index. That's a different topic. On this field is my, include, is my key column, and I'm going to include reputation column, which is over here, for something I'm going to do a little bit later. Now, this will just take a few seconds to run. Again, six and a half million records. So while it's doing that, we'll scroll down to this next one. All right, now I have an index, and this is the exact same query, just copied and pasted. If I do my control L, I am no longer running parallel, and I am no longer doing a clustered index scan. I'm doing a non-clustered index seek using the index that I just created. As you can see, index seek, non-clustered, NC underscore display name is what I called it. And when you hover over that, estimated number of rows, 1.33. Estimated number of rows to be read, which was six and a half million, also 1.33, because this is a two, is a one column index with one included column that there are statistics on that the query optimizer can use and go, ha, that's a much better way to do it than reading the entire table. It it really is that simple, kids. And then it selects that one row back for me. All right, again, still a very simple query where I've said display name equals this and only this. It's not a range or anything weird like that. So speaking of weird, let's get weird. We're going to change the equal. Instead of display name equals Kevin 3 and F, we're going to change it to like anything that starts with Kevin. Surely there's only one Kevin at the database, right? We do control L. We see our index seek still. Nothing has changed here. 100% of the time, and that's an important thing to notice. I'm sorry, the cost was spent in the index seek on this non-clustered index. Notice the arrow. It's a lot bigger than it was. This tells me estimated number of rows is over 10,000. Well, that kind of makes sense because Kevin's a fairly popular name worldwide, especially in, in America and uh, still quite a bit in Ireland and various other places. So it makes sense there would be Kevin wildcard some other stuff more than just the one time. Let's just do this for fun. We'll go up and we'll, run, we'll estimate both of them at the same time by highlighting them both. Control L and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I mean, we've gone from index seek to index seek, which is exactly the same. The only difference is the size of that arrow and the numbers in these tips here, showing you that there's going to be a lot more records. And because I like you and I want you to see it, we're going to run that. It's not going to take any time at all. 10,139 Kevins in the database. And if you scroll down, you start seeing all these other Kevins that are in there. And eventually you'll find a Kevin 3 and F if you look for it hard enough. All right. Like I said, same operators, different number of rows, because SQL Server know what you're asking for. Let me move this down just a hair. All right. Instead of just the display name, we're going to add this last access date uh, column to the query. I want this in the result set. So you're going to see something different. Control L to show the estimated plan. We still have our index seek on the NC display name index. Great. But now we have an additional operator, and now we have two rows. We're still reading right to left, but we're also reading top to bottom because we have a top and a bottom now. The index seek, simply that, seeked into the index, found the display name Kevin 3 and F, 
but then it had to go back to the data pages to find the last access date because that is not in my non-clustered index. It's only in the data pages or the, the clustered index, if you will. So it found the one record that matches Kevin 3 and F. It automatically pulled the ID over here with it because it does that behind the scenes. And then it went into the clustered index and found the last access date that matched up with Kevin 3 and F. And if you hover over this key lookup, it's going to tell you what it was looking up. Towards the bottom where you see output list, it says, I've wanted the Stack Overflow Users Table Last Access Date field because you asked for it in the select statement. That makes perfect sense. Go find this, then go find this, join them together, put them out, you know, output them to the, to the application. Not a big deal, but a key lookup simply means I used your index and it was great, thank you very much, but I didn't have everything I needed, so I went and got it on my own. That's what's happening when you get a key lookup. All right. Here's where things get a little, not tricky, but expensive. We're talk, when I talk about expensive, I'm talking about cost here. The cost of the query in terms of memory and time spent and resources allocated for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You go on forever on those. Control L. What we've, all we've done is add an order by clause. We're still with last access date, and we're going to order by that last access date, which is hilarious because there's only going to be one row because it's Kevin 3 and F. But notice that we still have the index seek. That hasn't changed. 18% of the cost is there. 20% of the cost is in the key lookup because it still has to go grab the last access date from the clustered index or from the data pages. Got to join them together. And then it's got to sort that one row. And this estimate says it's going to spend 62% of its total time, which is really just a couple of milliseconds. And it's going to spend that time sorting your one row. That's awesome. I love it. And then it's going to spit them back out. That's all the select operator does here. It just says, you asked for some data. I selected it. Here it is. All right. So we've gone from a clustered index scan and a select all the way over to index seeks, key lookups, bunch of arrows in between, sorting. I'm not going to get into inner joins. And this, there's a lot of different join operators. Some of them can get really expensive. But this is basically putting these two pieces of information together to show it to you. All right. We're getting close to the end. We're going to change last access date to reputation. Now, if you remember, my uh, index that I created early on had an include column for reputation. A display name is a key column, reputation as an include column. Let's see what that does. Again, control L because these are all gonna work. Nothing changed. The numbers are exactly the same. Still seeking the, the Kevin three and F, still doing a key lookup, even though I'm not asking for last access date, it's still doing that. And if you hover over this, the output list still has last access date because it needs that to do the order by later on. This happens after the index seek and the key lookup. So it's got to bring that last access date with it. That means it's got to go find it. Wonderful. Last, I think this is the last one I've got. Let's change the reputation here and here instead of last access date and see what changes. Control L, bang. Because my non-clustered index included the reputation column, it had it, no key lookup to find anything else because it was already included in it. And then it sorts that one row and it selects it out to you. So some of the stuff that we've looked at today, and, and that's all I have for you as far as samples, Clustered index scan, I'm reading your entire table. Those are generally pretty bad. You might get a scan sometimes when it's scanning for a chunk of rows in that table. It doesn't necessarily mean it's reading the entire table. A lot of times it is. Those are generally opportunities to at least investigate where an index might help you. Uh, an index scan can be kind of the same thing. I'm looking for a range because you asked for everything from last month or last year. So it's going to be more than one record. It's going to give you a chunk of records. And index seek is one of the most ideal things you can get. It's not always, but most of the time an index seek is what you want. If you've created an index, you want it to be used. Indexes that aren't being used are just taking up space. So an index seek is going and drilling in to a very small subset of rows to help satisfy your query. Uh, we looked at key lookups. When there's an index that can be used, it uses the IDs and primary keys of that table 
to go quickly into the table itself when that key lookup happens and pull a couple of extra columns or some extra columns back out. And then it puts them back together and moves on down the road. And then, of course, we saw some sorts in the, the, the select operator. The key things to remember when you're looking at these, and here's what's really fun, is if I just ran every single one of these queries at once, and if I do it with Control-M and do it again, <laughs> let's do it with Control-L. That'll work. I'll get some stuff. Sorry about that. I have a bunch of different queries in here, and they have use statements and all that. I've got every single one of them listed because it all ran as one big batch. If you've got some 5,000 line query or, or something very complicated that's running slow and the developers don't know why, this is how you do it. Get some sample parameters, go to your test box, run the query itself, and you'll get a, a breakout for each individual query. Notice that this was 3% of the total time. Zero, zero, three. If you scroll up and down very quickly, oh, there's 44 or something bad's happening there. 6%, 16%. 16. You can kind of drill into the things that are more important. Let's go look at that 44. Oh, this was a bad one. This is where I basically had to go get 10,000 records. So you can kind of play with it. Within this most expensive piece, I have all the time of it spent right here. So that's where I would look to see why did it do that. In this case, it was because I used the, the, the wild card Kevin. If I were to put percent Kevin instead of Kevin percent, or even just say percent Evan and take out the K, it's going to read the whole table because you can't do you can't make an index that works with wildcards on either end of a string. There's a whole different way to search for those effectively, but we're, that's way out of scope of what we're talking about. I'm way over time on what I expected to do here, but I wanted to show you a bunch of different operators and how subtle changes can generate different plans that the optimizer is trying to do what you're asking in the quickest possible way. Biggest thing you can take back from this: read from right to left, top to bottom, and you'll have a pretty good idea of what's actually happening under the hood. If you can optimize the things on the right, it affects everything else downstream over to the left. That's all I've got for you today. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, ask me questions, post them in the comments, whatever you want to do. Thanks, guys. Bye.